Case 5. Brazil's Roswell Incident. Virginia, Brazil. January 20, 1996. Welcome back to UFO Mysteries at Nightfall, your portal to the unexplained. I'm your host, Henry Thornton. This evening I will be telling you the story of the chilling UFO and alien encounter that took place in Brazil in 1996 and is known around the world as the Brazilian Roswell case. Have you ever looked up at the night sky and wondered if we're truly alone in the universe? Or perhaps questioned the stories of unidentified flying objects? Tonight we look at one of the scariest UFO and alien encounter cases of all time. So as always, step into the unknown with the UFO Mysteries at Nightfall podcast, where mysteries unfold in the vast expanse above. Together, let's uncover the alien enigma. Brazil, the largest country in South America, captivates with its diverse landscapes, vibrant culture, and rich history. From the iconic Amazon rainforest to the sun-kissed beaches of Copacabana and Ipanema, Brazil's geography is a tapestry of lush greenery, sprawling cities, and golden coastlines. The Amazon, often referred to as the lungs of the earth, is home to an incredible array of biodiversity that make it a global ecological treasure. Culturally, Brazil is a melting pot of influences shaped by its indigenous roots, Portuguese colonization, and the contributions of African, European, and Asian immigrants. The rhythmic beats of samba and the energetic dance of capoeira reflect the lively spirit of Brazilian music and dance, which play integral roles in the nation's identity. In addition to its lively cultural scene, Brazil boasts a rich culinary heritage, with feijoada, brigadeiro, and acaraje among the many flavors that tantalize the taste buds. The people of Brazil, known for their warmth and hospitality, contribute to the country's vibrant atmosphere. Whether reveling in the excitement of carnivals or enjoying a leisurely day at a local cafe, Brazilians embrace life with passion and enthusiasm. As you delve into this mysterious UFO encounter in Brazil, consider the backdrop of this dynamic and multifaceted nation, adding depth to the unfolding narrative of unexplained phenomena in the South American skies. On September 13, 1957, journalist Ibrahim Sued found himself in possession of an intriguing envelope containing a letter and three metal fragments. The letter's author claimed to have witnessed a UFO exploding in the sky over Ubatuba's beach. After collecting fragments from the alleged event, three pieces were sent to Sued along with the letter. Curious about the authenticity of the materials, Sued forwarded the fragments to a laboratory for analysis revealing that they were composed of pure magnesium. Around the same time, on October 16, 1957, Antonio Villas Boas made headlines by asserting that he had been abducted by extraterrestrials. Boas's account gained widespread attention as one of the earliest alien abduction narratives. On the evening of November 4, 1957, another UFO-related incident occurred. Two sentinels at the Itaipu Fort in Sao Paulo suffered moderate burns after being hit by a heat wave, allegedly emitted by an unidentified flying object descending from the sky. The incident caused a power outage at the fort, affecting both regular and emergency circuits. Subsequently, Brazilian Army and United States Air Force personnel, along with investigators from the Brazilian Air Force, visited the fort to interview the affected soldiers. Donald Kehoe from the USAF offered an interesting perspective, suggesting that aliens might be monitoring Earth's technological advancements, particularly in the realm of space exploration. The Trindade Island UFO incident of 1958 is one of the most well-documented and controversial cases in the history of UFO encounters. Trindade Island, located off the coast of Brazil, became the focal point of this mysterious event. On January 16, 1958, Members of the Brazilian Navy ship Almirante Saldanha reported witnessing a strange flying object near the island. The incident began when journalist and photographer Almiro Barauna, who was aboard the ship, captured a series of photographs of the UFO. The images depicted a disc-shaped object with a metallic appearance hovering in the sky above Trindade Island. The photographs, along with eyewitness testimonies from crew members, added a level of credibility to the incident. 
the Brazilian Navy conducted an official investigation into the Trindade Island UFO incident, led by Captain Viegas. The report concluded that the photographs and witness accounts provided sufficient evidence to confirm the presence of an unidentified flying object. The incident gained international attention, drawing interest from both UFO researchers and skeptics. The Calares UFO flap of 1977 stands out as one of the most remarkable and perplexing chapters in the history of UFO encounters in Brazil. Centered around the small town of Calares in the state of Pará, this series of extraordinary events unfolded over several months, leaving witnesses, scientists, and the military bewildered. The sightings began in late 1977, when numerous residents reported seeing strange lights in the sky and encountering unidentified flying objects. Witnesses described eerie beams of light directed at them, causing burns, injuries. The people of Brazil were living in complete fear. The phenomenon quickly escalated, with reports of bizarre aerial phenomena becoming widespread throughout the region. The Brazilian Air Force, alarmed by the escalating situation, initiated an official investigation known as Operation Saucer, Operação Prato. A team, led by Captain Uirangé Bolivar Suárez Nogueira de Holanda Lima, was dispatched to Calares to document and analyze the reported sightings. The investigation involved interviews with witnesses, photography, and the collection of evidence. Numerous accounts emerged during Operation Saucer, detailing encounters with unidentified flying objects that emitted intense beams of light. Witnesses reported a variety of physical effects, including burns, nausea, and temporary paralysis. The military investigation cataloged an extensive number of UFO sightings and unusual occurrences. Despite the thorough investigation, the Kolaris UFO flap remains shrouded in mystery. The Brazilian government declassified some documents related to Operation Saucer in the early 2000s. Around 8.15 p.m. BRT on May 19, 1986, Sergio Mota da Silva, an air traffic controller at São José dos Campos Airport, SJK, observed three bright lights hovering above the airport in the night sky. Simultaneously, Guarulhos International Airport detected contacts in the vicinity of São José dos Campos. Using binoculars, Sergio noted that the lights emitted a bright red glow, occasionally shifting colors to yellow, green, and orange-like hues. He observed the objects approaching the airport when the runway lights were dimmed and moving away once the lights were increased. At 9.08 p.m. BRT, an EMB-121 plane with the callsign PTMBZ, which was flying from Brasilia to SJK, reported witnessing bright red lights outside of SJK, moving east to west near the coast. The aircraft was piloted by Colonel Oziri Silva, the founder of Embraer. He described the objects as resembling big red stars and attempted without success to approach them. By 9.39 p.m., BRT, Santa Cruz Air Force Base went on alert due to numerous unidentified radar plots around San Jose dos Campos. Around 10.27 p.m., an F-5E was scrambled from Santa Cruz AFB, reporting radar and visual contact with a white light below its level. The object maintained a distance of 10 to 12 miles and 10 degrees above the aircraft, changing colors from white to red, green, and then white again. The F-5E followed the object until it was more than 180 miles away, and then returned to base before it ran out of fuel. At 10.48 p.m., Annapolis AFB launched a Mirage 3E interceptor, call sign JG-116, which detected five radar contacts but no visual contacts. The Mirage managed to get within two miles of one contact, which displayed zigzagging and 90-degree turns before rapidly moving away. Another F-5E, call sign JB-07, took off at 10.50 p.m., reporting visual and radar contact with a bright red light. After an unsuccessful attempt to close in, the light seemed to turn off, coinciding with the radar contact being lost. Despite the fighter turning 180 degrees as instructed, no further visual or radar contacts were obtained. In total, 21 radar plots were recorded during the incident. Virginia, Brazil, 1996. Virginia is a city located in the state of Minas Gerais, Brazil. Virginia is a vibrant city known for its rich cultural heritage and diverse community. The landscape is characterized by rolling hills and greenery, typical of the Brazilian countryside. The city has a mix of urban and suburban areas, featuring modern infrastructure alongside more traditional neighborhoods. The people of Virginia are known for their warmth and hospitality, 
contributing to a friendly and welcoming atmosphere. The community is diverse, with residents engaged in various activities ranging from agriculture to commerce. Varginha is home to a number of local festivals, events, and cultural celebrations that showcase the city's unique traditions and customs. In terms of architecture, you can find a mix of modern and colonial-style buildings throughout the city. The local markets, parks, and public spaces provide opportunities for socializing and enjoying the city's atmosphere. Varginha is also surrounded by natural beauty with nearby parks and outdoor areas offering recreational opportunities for residents and visitors alike. Overall, Virginia is a lively city with a distinct Brazilian charm, where residents take pride in their local culture and community. Established in 1958, the North American Aerospace Defense Command, or NORAD as it is known, originally had the primary mission of offering early warning and defense against potential threats from Soviet bombers and missile launches. However, its scope expanded beyond the initial Cold War concerns to encompass monitoring the skies globally. In the early hours of January 13, 1996, NORAD reached out to Brazilian air defense with alarming news. An object had entered Earth's atmosphere approximately 200 miles northeast of Sao Paulo. When pressed for details about the object's nature, NORAD could only classify it as unidentified. On the same night in the opulent residence of a highly esteemed family of doctors, a sense of calm permeates the air. Inside, they await a food delivery. They are sitting in their living room enjoying conversation when they hear the hum of a motorcycle engine and becoming louder as the delivery man has arrived. He approaches their door with a casual stride. As the delivery man reaches the doorstep, he glances upward and time seems to freeze. Against the backdrop of the evening sky, a flying saucer spins with astonishing speed. The doorbell rings, and the doctor answers the door, exchanging a mundane transaction for a moment before becoming frozen in disbelief. Both men stand, captivated and stunned, their eyes locked onto the unearthly spectacle above. The alien spacecraft flies overhead, zigzagging through the sky at impossible speeds and pulling off incredible maneuvers, while casting an eerie glow upon the affluent residents. The doctor's family run out to the garden to get a look at the flying saucer. The metallic saucer hovers ominously, adorned with red lights and spinning at a frenetic pace. The daughters, fear etched on their faces, join the tableau, their once serene surroundings now transformed into a stage for an otherworldly encounter. Several days later, in the early hours of Saturday, January 13, 1996, the tranquil countryside was abruptly disrupted. A man named Eureko and his partner Aurelina are awoken by the animals on the farm, all making strange sounds that they have not heard before. The animals sound terrified of something. The sheep and the cows in particular were making a lot of strange sounds. Eureko, a diligent farmhand, gets up to check what's going on. He glances at his clock. It reads 01.30 a.m. He looks out the windows into the vast expanse of the rural landscape that is now bathed in an eerie darkness and silence. Eureko and Aurelina make their way downstairs and venture into the stillness of the night to investigate. They are leaving the front door, when suddenly their attention was seized by an inexplicable phenomenon. Above the farmhouse, an unidentified object, emitting an otherworldly glow, hovered mysteriously completely still and silent. The couple found themselves captivated by the surreal display. The luminous object began to move and seemed to dance in the air, performing maneuvers that defied the laws of earthly physics. The craft shoots off at supersonic speed, stops, and then continues to fly, but as it is leaving the second time the craft is no longer moving as smoothly, it looks like it's in trouble as it leaves their sight of view. They stand stunned and unable to believe what they have just witnessed, but they don't report the crash for fear of being ridiculed. At the same time, on January 13, 1996, a young man named Carlos de Souza embarked on a drive along a deserted highway en route to rendezvous with friends, as they were planning on flying light planes the next day. As he cruised along the road, he witnesses a UFO in the sky, hovering approximately 400 to 300 meters above, steadily losing altitude. The unidentified craft performed a mesmerizing series of maneuvers, descending to the road, executing a 360-degree turn, fluctuating in altitude and eventually gliding across the road above a field. Caught in astonishment, Carlos noticed the craft hovering about 150 feet in the air before abruptly shutting down. Its propulsion systems appear to have shut off, and the craft is plummeting to the ground. 
Fueled by concern for potential occupants, Carlos decided to investigate further. Driving towards the presumed crash site, he passes two cattle gates on a remote country road. He descends a hill. He can see a lit-up house in the distance and the spacecraft beside it crashed into the earth. The surroundings were marked by an eerie scene. A saucer partially buried in the ground, emitting an acidic substance that ignited the grass, forming a large fiery circle of 40 to 50 meters in diameter. Estimating the saucer to be roughly the size of a minibus, Carlos speculated on the possibility of deceased extraterrestrial beings inside. The field was strewn with debris, and the air was tainted with a pungent odor reminiscent of ammonia and rotten eggs, forcing Carlos to cover his nose with his shirt as his eyes watered. Examining a piece of debris resembling aluminium or tinfoil, Carlos discovered its unusual strength and lightness, resisting attempts to rip or stretch it. In the midst of his observations, the sudden arrival of military trucks, accompanied by engine sounds and flashing lights, interrupted the surreal scene. Soldiers emerged, sternly ordering Carlos to leave, pointing their guns at him, emphasizing their directive. Faced with the military's stern commands, Carlos hastily retreated to his car and drove away. Subsequently, he mysteriously vanished from public view for over two decades, leaving behind an unexplained encounter that still lingers in the annals of unidentified aerial phenomena. Seven days later, two friends leave a local gym in Vargina and are walking home their usual route when they see a convoy of military vehicles heading into town. The friends think this is unusual and wonder what's happening. As they navigate through the familiar streets of their neighborhood, the atmosphere shifted. The quiet was disrupted by the sight of a military blockade at the entrance. They approached the armed soldiers standing guard. Hey officers, what's happening here? One of the men inquired politely. The soldier, stern-faced, doesn't respond, he just shakes his head. The man, feeling a sense of entitlement to his own neighborhood, argued, But it's a free country. I live right there. I just want to walk through. Several of the soldiers shake their heads and point their guns at the man. He feels utterly terrified. He had never seen a gun before, let alone been in a situation like this. The two friends look at each other before they turn and walk away quickly, both feeling frightened and very confused. Valkaria and Liliana Silva were two teenage sisters, age 14 and 16, and they lived with their mother in the Santana district, which was a hilly suburban part of town. On the day of the encounter, the girls met one of their friends, Katya Xavier. She was a little older than the sisters and worked in the area. The three girls then took off to start walking home together. Their route took them through a patch of woodland which separated the neighborhoods that girls lived in. As they walked through the woodland, located in Jarjamundir, they came across something which completely shocked them. At first they thought it was an animal, but that was only for a moment before they realized the true nature of their discovery. They could tell from the look of the creature that it was not just an animal. The thing they saw in front of them was a complete monstrosity, and it behaved in a terrifying manner. The creature appeared to be as scared of the girls as the girls were of it. As they took a closer look at the creature, they could see that it appeared to be sweating from the heat. Suddenly the strange creature looked directly at the girls and they could see that it had huge red eyes. Eyes which were at least three times bigger than those of a human being. The girls all looked at each other in fear and screamed as they all ran off together. When they arrived home, it was clear to their mother that the Silva sisters were very upset, with Liliana in particular being almost inconsolable. Their mother asked what had upset them so terribly, they told her simply, We saw the devil. Mrs. Silva was taken aback by this revelation and hesitated for a moment before suggesting that she and the girls get into the truck and go investigate. The girls were very reluctant to do this, but their mother was able to convince them to go with her and direct her to the spot where they had their terrifying encounter. When they arrived at the spot in the forest where the girls had met the alien, it had vanished and was nowhere to be seen. However, Mrs. Silva saw something strange on the ground. A footprint had been left at the scene and appeared to have been made by a creature with three oddly shaped toes. In addition to this, an extremely noxious odor filled the air. It was unlike anything that she had ever smelled in her entire life. The aroma was so overpowering that it filled Mrs. Silva's senses for another three weeks, and despite her best efforts, she could not get rid of that smell, not even after rinsing with hot water and alcohol. The smell was said to be even worse than sulfur, with one of the girls saying that it smelled like ammonia, just as D'Souza had described it. In the aftermath of the Silva sisters' encounter with the alien creature, word quickly spread throughout the town of Virginia, 
and it wasn't long before the media caught wind of the sensational story. Local newspapers buzzed with speculation, and rumors of extraterrestrial activity circulated like wildfire among residents. However, it was Brazil's most-watched Sunday TV show, Fantastico, that catapulted the story into the national spotlight. With headlines declaring an alien being had been spotted in Virginia, the media frenzy reached fever pitch. The Silva sisters' encounter became the talk of the town, captivating the imaginations of viewers across the country. But the Silva sisters were not alone in their experience. Reports began to surface of multiple sightings by other residents in the area. People from all walks of life came forward with their own accounts of encountering strange beings and unidentified flying objects. Some claimed to have witnessed alien activity in the skies above Virginia, while others reported encounters on the ground. The media coverage of these sightings only served to fuel the public's fascination with the UFO encounter. With each new report, the mystery deepened and speculation ran rampant. As the story continued to unfold, more and more residents came forward with their own stories of strange encounters, adding to the growing body of evidence supporting the existence of extraterrestrial life in Virginia. In the midst of the media frenzy, the town of Virginia found itself at the center of a national conversation about UFOs and alien visitation. While skeptics dismissed the sightings as mere fantasy, many residents remained convinced that something extraordinary had happened in their town. On the night of the reported sighting, TV reporter Nye Nadea found himself caught in the midst of a sudden and dramatic turn of events. As he described it, the weather seemed to close in rapidly, as if a storm were looming on the horizon. Peering out of the window, he was struck by the abrupt darkness that descended with the onset of nightfall. Amidst this atmospheric shift, news began to filter in about a sighting near Marcao's gymnasium, involving a group of girls who claimed to have encountered a mysterious creature. Intrigued by the unfolding events, Nadia, familiar with the city and equipped with his trusty Volkswagen Beetle, made the decision to investigate firsthand. However, upon arriving at the scene, Nadea's plans were thwarted by the unexpected presence of army trucks and personnel, barring his passage. Despite his protests and inquiries, he was met with a firm refusal, citing the matter as one of national security. This abrupt denial left Nadia and others bewildered, prompting suspicions of a cover-up. For Nadia and those present, the situation seemed to present a paradoxical blend of confusion and clarity. In a chilling turn of events, military officers Edward Lopez and Marco Cherisi found themselves at the heart of the Virginia UFO incident, after having an encounter that would change their lives forever. Driving down a deserted road, their senses on high alert for anything out of the ordinary, they were startled as a creature darted across their path with giant red eyes, directly in front of their car. Reacting swiftly, they leaped from their vehicle and managed to apprehend the creature, subduing it and transporting it to the local hospital. Little did they know that their actions would unleash a chain of events shrouded in mystery and tragedy. Upon capturing the creature, Marco found himself overwhelmed by an inexplicable sensation. A strange odor seemed to permeate his very being, clinging to his clothes and skin like an oily residue. Over time, this sensation evolved into something far more sinister, as Marco began to exhibit signs of a mysterious infection that defied medical explanation. For weeks, Marco's condition deteriorated rapidly, his body ravaged by an infection that seemed impervious to treatment. Despite the efforts of seasoned medical professionals, his immune system faltered and his life hung in the balance. Even the most experienced doctors were at a loss to explain the nature of his illness, with some suggesting a sinister cover-up that silenced Marco from speaking about his encounter with the alien. Tragically, Marco succumbed to his illness, leaving behind a bewildered medical community grappling with the enigma of his untimely death. Autopsies revealed traces of unidentified substances coursing through his veins, further deepening the mystery surrounding his demise. In the wake of Marco's death, Questions lingered about the true nature of the creature he encountered, and the events that unfolded that fateful night. Was there a concerted effort to conceal the truth about extraterrestrial contact, or were darker forces at play, orchestrating a cover-up of unfathomable proportions? Marco's sister's account of the rush to bury him only adds to the sense of intrigue, suggesting that even in death, he remained entwined in a web of secrecy and uncertainty. Following the Silva family's encounter with the alien creature, their lives took an unexpected and ominous turn with the arrival of the mysterious Men in Black. 
These enigmatic figures, clad in black suits and exhibiting an air of authority, appeared at the Silva family's doorstep unannounced, their true motives veiled in secrecy. Upon their arrival, the men in black wasted no time in questioning the Silva family about their sighting, probing for details with an intensity that bordered on intimidation. Despite the family's initial reluctance to divulge information, they found themselves compelled to comply with the demands of their unwelcome visitors. As the interrogation progressed, tensions mounted, with the men in black issuing veiled threats and warnings to the Silva family, hinting at dire consequences should they choose to speak openly about their encounter. These ominous insinuations only served to deepen the family's sense of unease, leaving them shaken and fearful for their safety. In the aftermath of the Men in Black's visit, the Silva family found themselves caught in a web of paranoia and uncertainty, unsure of whom to trust or where to turn for help. Jara Rodriguez, a renowned UFO researcher, emerged as a central figure in the incident. With a steadfast dedication to uncovering the truth, Rodriguez embarked on a meticulous investigation, leaving no stone unturned in his quest for answers. Armed with a wealth of knowledge and years of experience in the field, Rodriguez delved deep into the heart of the enigma, determined to shed light on the truth. Rodriguez embarked on a series of expeditions to key hotspots around the city of Virginia. Armed with a keen eye for detail and an unwavering determination, he scoured the landscape for clues, meticulously documenting any evidence that could shed light on the mysterious UFO incident. From remote wooded areas to bustling urban centers, Rodriguez left no stone unturned in his quest for answers, tirelessly pursuing leads and following up on eyewitness accounts in his pursuit of the truth. In his tireless quest for answers, Rodriguez found a steadfast ally and fellow UFO researcher, Vittorio Pacaccini. Together, the two researchers pooled their expertise and resources, forming a formidable partnership. With a shared commitment to uncovering the secrets of what really happened in Virginia, Rodriguez and Pacaccini worked tirelessly, sharing information, comparing notes, and collaborating on investigative efforts. Their partnership proved instrumental in piecing together the puzzle of the otherworldly events. Rodriguez embarked on a series of interviews with key witnesses, from local residents to military personnel. Rodriguez sought to gather first-hand accounts and first-hand insights. With a keen eye for detail and an unwavering commitment to the truth, Rodriguez meticulously documented each interview, piecing together a comprehensive picture of the events that had shaken the city to its core. Rodriguez and Pacaccini, it turned out, were not the only respected UFO researchers investigating the incident. Dr. Lear from the USA was a distinguished UFO researcher, renowned for his groundbreaking work in the field of ufology, he too had set his sights on Brazil as the next destination for his investigative endeavors. Armed with a wealth of knowledge and a relentless dedication to uncovering the truth, Dr. Lear embarked on a journey to unravel the mysteries surrounding the Virginia incident. Motivated by a deep-seated curiosity and a desire to shed light on the otherworldly events, Dr. Lear's arrival in Brazil marked the beginning of a new chapter in the ongoing quest for answers. Upon arriving in Brazil, Dr. Lear wasted no time immersing himself in the local culture and landscape, eager to gain first-hand insights into what happened in Virginia. From bustling urban centers to remote rural areas, Dr. Lear traversed the diverse terrain of Brazil, seeking to understand the broader context of the otherworldly events that had unfolded in Virginia. With a keen eye for detail and an insatiable thirst for knowledge, Dr. Lear embraced the vibrant tapestry of Brazilian culture forging connections with locals and gaining invaluable insights into the enigmatic phenomenon that had captured the nation's imagination. He recorded hours of witness testimony on his state-of-the-art video camera. Dr. Lear forged partnerships with local experts and investigators, tapping into their knowledge and expertise to uncover the truth. Working hand-in-hand -hand with seasoned researchers and dedicated enthusiasts, Dr. Lear exchanged ideas, shared insights, and collaborated on investigative efforts pooling their collective resources in pursuit of a common goal. Through their combined efforts, Dr. Lear spoke with the wife of Mark DeCessis, who tragically passed away. According to her, after the medical report was delivered following her husband's death, she encountered troubling obstacles. She claimed that those responsible for the report demanded payment, prolonging the process significantly. Eventually, when she did receive the report, it was incomplete, with crucial pages missing.
This experience left her deeply frustrated and raised serious concerns about the integrity and transparency of the investigation into her husband's passing. It didn't take long before Dr. Lear and Uberajara Rodriguez crossed each other's paths and they formed an alliance which led to them uncovering a startling revelation. Hours before the Silva sisters' encounter, the fire brigade had apprehended another alien survivor from the crashed spacecraft. Intrigued by this development, Dr. Lear and Rodriguez set out to investigate further. They began by questioning the fire brigade personnel allegedly involved in the capture of the first creature. According to reports, the fire department had been dispatched to a forested area following multiple eyewitness accounts of a strange creature in the vicinity. Upon arrival at a gravel wasteland, the firefighters witnessed the alien, which stared at them before darting into the forest. Undeterred, the firefighters pursued the creature, eventually managing to ensnare it with a net. Subsequently, they transported the captured alien to a nearby hospital for examination. James Fox is a well-known filmmaker and investigative journalist with a keen interest in UFOs and extraterrestrial phenomena. His groundbreaking documentary films have shed light on some of the most compelling UFO cases in history. In his quest for the truth, Fox embarked on a comprehensive investigation into the events surrounding the Virginia incident, delving deep into the heart of the mystery. One of the key aspects of Fox's investigation was his extensive interviews with a wide range of individuals connected to the Virginia incident. From eyewitnesses to government officials, Fox left no stone unturned in his pursuit of answers. Among those he spoke to was the mayor of Varginha at the time of the incident, who provided valuable insights into the government's response to the UFO sightings. Additionally, Fox interviewed local residents who claimed to have witnessed the otherworldly events firsthand. Their testimonies provided crucial details about the appearance and behavior of the alleged extraterrestrial creatures, as well as the military's involvement in the aftermath of the sightings. Furthermore, Fox's documentary delved into the broader cultural and societal implications of the Brazil UFO incident. Through interviews with experts in ufology and psychology, Fox explored the impact of UFO sightings on public perception and the implications for society as a whole. Fox's documentary about the Virginia alien encounter remains one of the most comprehensive and compelling explorations of the case to date. Through meticulous research and insightful interviews, Fox has provided valuable insights into one of the most enduring mysteries of our time, leaving audiences intrigued and eager for further investigation into the unknown realms of the cosmos. Near the end of the documentary, James speaks to an ex-military member who recalls a story that starts off as an ordinary day like any other day, when suddenly at the barracks a Navy helicopter landed, then lots of other vehicles started entering the barracks. The man was standing at the bank about to receive his payment when a Navy truck parked outside and military then moved fast, pushing a mysterious silver metallic box. He found it strange the military were pushing the mysterious box towards the infirmary. The Navy then started ordering everyone to get out of there. Was this box an alien coffin or a safe way to transport an extraterrestrial? Because it was the manned squadron that was directly involved in the transportation. He never spoke about the event again until the James Fox documentary, where he conducts an interview with the filmmaker, but does not show his face. The final interview on the James Fox documentary is perhaps the most intriguing. It was January 1996, when a radiologist had an unexpected visit from the military while working at the hospital. He only agreed to share his story with James if he could remain anonymous. The radiologist explained to Fox that as he looked across the hospital courtyard, he saw a military truck along with several other military vehicles and around 10 police cars. He was confused why there was such a large military presence at the hospital. This question was something that went through his head even more when he saw numerous soldiers and military personnel roaming the corridors of the hospital. Several of them were carrying a strange-looking box which the radiologist saw them open and remove a black zip body bag from. The radiologist was then asked by the military personnel to carry out x-rays on the body that was in the bag. Specifically, they wanted him to x-ray the skull, thorax, abdomen, and pelvis, and then the arms and legs. Once the x-rays were developed, the military took control of them immediately. They were classified information, and no doctors at the hospital were allowed to see them. The military told the radiologist that he had done his job, but that he must not breathe a word of it to anyone. 
During the interview, the radiologist also told Fox that the stench from the body was unlike anything he had ever smelled before. It was a strong mix of ammonia and sulfur. And just like other witnesses before him, no matter how much the radiologist and hospital staff cleaned and disinfected the X-ray room, the smell would not go away. The hospital received many complaints about the smell because it was so pungent and disgusting. The Virginia UFO incident has garnered significant attention in the media, inspiring various movies, documentaries, books, and even attracting tourism to the region. Here's an overview of its portrayal in different forms of media. The water tower shaped like a UFO is an iconic landmark in Virginia, Brazil, closely associated with the city's UFO incident. Located in Jardimandere, a neighborhood in Virginia, this unique structure has become a symbol of the city's fascination with extraterrestrial phenomena. The water tower, designed to resemble a classic flying saucer UFO, stands prominently against the skyline, drawing the attention of residents and visitors alike. Its sleek, metallic exterior and distinctive shape evoke images of otherworldly spacecraft, adding to the mystique surrounding the Virginia UFO incident. Several documentaries have been made about the Virginia UFO incident, providing in-depth analyses and first-hand accounts of the events. Notable examples include UFO Files, Brazil's Roswell, and the Brazilian UFO Crash. The best and most highly regarded documentary on the incident is Moment of Contact, which was made by James Fox and released in 2022. The incident has also inspired fictionalized portrayals in movies. While not directly named after Virginia, films like The Fourth Kind and Fire in the Sky draw inspiration from similar UFO encounters, contributing to the broader cultural fascination with extraterrestrial phenomena. Numerous books have been written about the Virginia UFO incident, offering detailed investigations and theories about what transpired. Some notable titles include Virginia UFO Revisited by Ubirajara Franco Rodriguez and UFO Contact, The Virginia Incident by David R. Chatsey. The incident received widespread media coverage both locally and internationally, with news outlets reporting on the alleged sightings and military involvement. This coverage has contributed to the enduring interest in the case and its impact on public perception of UFO phenomena. The Virginia UFO incident has also sparked interest in UFO tourism, with visitors coming to the region to learn more about the events and explore related attractions. While not a major tourist destination, Virginia has capitalized on its association with the UFO incident by offering guided tours and hosting annual UFO-themed events. Overall, the Virginia UFO incident continues to capture the imagination of people worldwide, leaving an indelible mark on popular culture and sparking ongoing fascination with the possibility of extraterrestrial visitation. Thank you for joining us on this captivating journey through the Brazilian Roswell incident. Remember to follow rate, and share UFO mysteries at nightfall, and stay updated on our upcoming episodes. Until then, as always, keep looking up to the skies and never stop searching for the truth.